So recently, I made a compulsive purchase. Um, I purchased a new airbrush. I've never had an airbrush before, and I've done research on it a bunch of times. Uh, just decided one day I want to go buy an airbrush. So this one is the Harder and Steenbeck Ultra 2024. And I didn't know when I purchased it that it had just been released. And the day after I purchased it, it was already out of stock. So I'm lucky I got it when I did. But I also got a Cool 2D. Um, that's the name of the air compressor. I'm not joking. That's really its name. Uh, it's got a, a three liter. I, I was just going to ask you what the hell a 2D was. <laughs> yeah, it's it's I've not heard what you think. I've before. <laughs> but uh, it's got a three liter tank on it, and it's got a fan to cool some motor that's on the system. I don't know much about airbrushes or or tanks, but we're just going to go ahead and do an unboxing for you today. So we're going to learn with Rich about airbrushes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't yeah. wait to see what he does on three foot good with airbrushing. Yeah, well... I've already got ideas. There's terrain to paint. There's all kinds of cool stuff to do. You remember when we used to play paintball? Yeah. And sometimes your paintball would break as it's leaving the barrel? Yeah. So that happened regularly. That's what this is. Okay. It has that same effect to blow paintballs out of it if you're doing something wrong and ruin your mini. So I've learned that much. <laughs> all right. Okay, we don't want to do that. No, but it would be amusing. It would, the first time. And I have a, a weird instinct to keep calling this thing a gun because it breaks down just like a gun does. And everybody else calls them airbrushes, so if you hear me call this a gun, please don't crucify me. Crucify. <laughs> crucify. Quick, get mad. See All what right. it does. See how it makes us feel if you're mad. Yeah, that's it. So it looks like we've got... Uh, well, let's see, do it here. Looks like we've got information about paints. Looks like they're in the sticker world too. Everybody's got to have stickers for their stuff. Uh, Spraygunner.com stickers. I did get this on sale. Um, I got a really good deal. Uh, on Spraygunner.com, the, the airbrush itself, the Ultra 2024, was only $110, but the Cool 2D, the air compressor, was on sale for $117. And normally, according to their website, it goes for $150. So it looks like. Whoops. Man, that sucker's heavy. It weighs 15 pounds. Oh, it's got a handle. Check that shit out. Okay. I'm doing the Price is Right model thing. There you go. Okay. Sorry, but you don't look like a Price is Right model. <laughs> Wrong bits. <laughs> well, All right. yeah. So what I've learned about this thing is that with your air compressor, everybody thinks the biggest important thing is how much noise it makes. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to afford a quiet air compressor, but the other things that are important is that it has a tank on it and that it provides constant smooth air and the tank helps it do that. But the other thing that's new with this model, which is the current model of the no name, whoops, the no name brand, Right here. See, if I was really doing my job, I would have done that for <laughs> But um, the big thing about this is that it has this cooling fan on it. I think that's the cooling fan. Or it might be built into this. This could be it too. But it's got a power switch here. Over here is the, uh, the, water, uh, the water thingy that you release water after you're done using the air compressor. Of that's course, the technical term. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I'm the technomancer, and I know all the technical terms. <laughs> that's the technical term. It's a water thingy. 
So it does come with a manual that I will be reading before I try to use it for the first time and blow up the house. Unlike something I would do. <laughs> <laughs> this is the actual airbrush, which is really, really small compared to the compressor. Harder and Steenbeck Ultra. Okay, that is the Ultra 2024. So this is, when I went and did my research online, I found out that this is designed specifically for newbies like me. Because oftentimes when new people get into airbrushing, they, uh, they have problems with the airbrush because they don't understand how to use it. And this airbrush, prevents you from having those problems. And once I get it out of the box, I will explain why it prevents you from having those problems. So, real fancy. Harder and steam back. It looks like a professional airbrush this way. Looks like a paintball gun, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks like my old F2 Illustrator. <laughs> mini, mini. It's it's like the what did he, what did he call that in Men in Black? The the midgy cricket of paintball guns. So very very small. And here is the the very small uh, paint pot. Now what I've seen other people that have purchased this complain about with that paint pot is you might have noticed when I put it in I just pressed it in it doesn't screw in but it seats in there real well it doesn't come out when you shake it upside down I was about to yeah I was waiting for that to fall right, out yeah. <laughs> so I. but so the thing that I understand that this airbrush does better for newbies is when you're using an airbrush, you're supposed to press press down on the trigger and then draw it back. Pressing down on the trigger causes the air to start flowing. Drawing it back causes the paint to start flowing. Now, watch what happens when I try to draw it back without pressing it down first. I cannot press it back without it being pressed down. So that's one way that it helps newbies like me in not making mistakes because if you buy an airbrush that doesn't have this safety switch built, that's that's a good term for it, it's a safety. Um, if you buy one that doesn't have that and you're a newbie and you draw it back first and then press it down, that's gonna put paint on the needle before you've got air flowing and then it's gonna shoot that out like a paintball. Mm -hmm. And so this prevents that. That's also how you get clogs because if that paint dries, after releasing the pressure, then that's gonna be something you've gotta take the whole thing apart and clean it. So, uh, Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck, he is the general manager. He's made a bunch of great videos talking about this thing. He says that you should not take this thing apart as the first step in getting to know your, your uh, airbrush. So I'm not going to, I'm just gonna start trying to use it and. When it comes time that I need to clean it, I'll, I'll give it a try and clean it, but it's just like breaking down a gun and cleaning a gun, so that's that's fine. Now the other thing that's unique about this is this dial on the back. Now one thing you may or may not be able to see, because I can't, I don't have my glasses on. Let's see. Can you see there where it's got wording on the top? Mm -hmm. I can't see the wording right now because I'm blind, but the wording that's up there is prime and base. And notice how it's got little ridges right here. Right. And as you turn it, those ridges Get keep getting better. smaller and smaller. So as you turn it, what that's doing is it's preventing you from drawing the paint back too far for what you're trying to do. So if I'm starting out with priming my minis, I'm gonna set it to the prime. And when I draw the, the uh, the trigger back, it's not going to let me put too much paint on the model at once. 
So that's another way that it helps with newbies. And this tip on it, it on, on paint brushes, tried to use the right word, oftentimes you'll see a, a paintbrush with like a fork on the top and the bottom with the needle exposed. And for some reason, this, this tip on this one, it's supposed to help newbies maybe with uh, helping not get it clogged. I, I don't remember exactly, but anyway, this is a, a quick release that it's got on it. And if you unscrew it, you'll expose threads. So if, you're, if your hose is, <laughs> if you're an experienced airbrusher, you know what I'm looking for. There's no hose. I didn't know if these would come with the hose, so I didn't buy one separately. Yeah. So it looks like when I go to Adepticon, the first thing I'm buying is hose. Yeah, yeah. And I'd like to get uh, the braided hose and one that's really long because I've also learned that a long hose helps with delivering that uh, continuous, steady air pressure. So. Uh, Give it a try. Some people like longer hoses. Yeah, I've heard that too. But I don't think it's going to impress a girl. Unless I carry it around in my pocket. Maybe. <laughs> huh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you've got a lot of uh, terrain that this could help with base or uh, yeah. priming. Huh. That's very interesting. Now, part of the reason I started out, or I didn't start out with airbrushing, I mean, I'm 55 years old and it's my first airbrush. Everybody has airbrushes these days. I should, well, not everybody. <laughs> but, but most people have airbrushes these days. Let me say it this way. Everyone that sits at the table at the paint club right now has an airbrush but me. But now I can fit in. Um, You're one of the cool kids. Yeah, now I am, now I am. Right. But, I should have started this 20 years ago, but it just looked like it's way too much trouble to me. Me too. Because you've got to clean this this pot every time you want to put a new color on. And I don't know, I, I just finally gave in and decided to give it a try because it might level up my painting ability. So, and to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm just dying to try to uh, uh, put a, paint a cloak on somebody with those real smooth buttery lines, so. I'd love to be able to do that. So anyway, that's the very unprepared unboxing that we did quickly. Do you have any questions? Uh, not yet. I, I, this is the first I've seen one this close. I've seen them used before, but I know nothing about them. So um, yes, I'm just now learning as you're learning. So it should be pretty interesting to see what uh, Rich does. And then we're going to have to show off some of his work here on Three Foot Good. Well, I'm probably going to do another video of the first time I try to do it and they'll be able to see what, what fool I make of myself. That'll be cool. <laughs> That'll be real cool. Then maybe I'll show people what I've done differently with it. So That'll be real cool. But anyway. Well, hey, thanks for tuning in and uh, stop watching us. And go paint some minis. <laughs> Actually, we can't say that because that's a mini axe thing. So go roll some dice. <laughs> All right. <laughs>